Hi, my name is Nurse Carolyn with Bella Glow Med Spa, and today we're going to talk about Botox. There are four different kinds of Botox. There's the original Botox, there's Newtox, there's Dysport, and there's Xeomin. Lauren here has done Botox and Newtox. She likes Botox, but like I said, over time, we typically kind of build up like a little bit of resistance, so that's why it's important to switch it up. So today we're going to do Dysport. Dysport kicks in faster than Botox, and it's going to last just about the same amount of time. Neuromodulators are gonna last anywhere from three to six months. It kind of just depends on different factors such as your metabolism, if you're taking any medications, if you have any autoimmune disorders. Obviously, if you work out a lot, you're gonna metabolize Botox a whole lot faster as well. I really like Dysport and it's actually my go-to for patients because if they have like an event going on or something really important that's coming up, if I give them Dysport, it's gonna kick in a lot faster and they're gonna see those results by the time their event is here frown for me. So this is called the glabella complex. There are five muscles in here. And when we put Botox in these, it's going to soften them up and it's going to help minimize these static lines that are forming. Up here is the frontalis muscle. These are the horizontal static lines that are coming in. When you put Botox in that, it's going to soften those and it's going to help minimize these horizontal lines that are coming in. Right over here, go ahead and give me a big smile. This is the obicularis oculi muscle. It's a sphincter muscle. So when we put Botox in, and not only is it going to soften her crow's feet, it's also going to lift. Because whenever you freeze a depressor, which is this, which is the obicularis oculi, or the glabella frown, it's also a depressor muscle, it's gonna lift. Okay, it's gonna make them feel brighter and more alive. Up here, these horizontal lines, if you put Botox in these and freeze these, it could actually push the brows down and give people more of a Neanderthal look, which women obviously do not like. So it's very important to treat all of these muscles at the same time so we can make them look bright and youthful. Obviously, we need to sterilize their face because we don't want any infection or anything. So it's very important that you do a double to triple cleanse. I use alcohol and I also use Hiblicans. Then usually I just like to see their animation in their face and then I can kind of gauge how many units I want to do. With Lauren, we usually do about 40, which is going to be 120 units of Dysport. So go ahead and be mad at me. So right here is her Procerus muscle. Keep being mad at me and then I just kind of like to hit the little corrugators and then also it's important that you hit the tail of the corrugator be mad at me so she still has a little bit in there from last time and then under here lays the depressor muscle we're not even gonna hit those today we're just gonna go right for the Procerus and the corrugator and the tail of the corrugator right there you want to be careful when you're injecting the frontalis because if you dump too much Botox into the frontalis muscle you're gonna dump their eyebrows down so I'm typically a little bit lighter up here. I'd rather have them come in for a touch up if needed. You also don't wanna to go too low and lateral. If you go too low and lateral, you're also gonna dump their eyebrows down. It's better if the person comes back with a little bit of a lift. And you know what, if they don't like that lift, I can always put my finger right here. I can do a little quarter of a unit right there and I can soften their brows back down just so they're not spocked. A patient would much rather be spocked than dropped. I mean, of course they don't wanna be either, but I'd rather have my patient come back with a little bit too high of the tail of their eyebrow lifted, because then what I can do is I can just put my finger right here. You don't wanna go any lower than that. I can do a dash, and what I mean by a dash is just about a quarter of a unit, and that will just soften the spock back down. So when I'm Marking the frontalis muscle, you want to go right into the belly of the muscles. So she tends to get the, her wrinkles up really high up here. So I like to give her some right here. You can go high and lateral. Elevate them up high, high, high. And so because I know her face, I know that if I do a quarter of a unit right here, I know that her eyebrows aren't going to drop and I know that it's safe to do on her. Typically when it's a new patient, you want to be very careful with this zone right here, because this right here is gonna bring everything down like this, especially if they're already heavy-setted. 
like in their eyebrow, if their eyebrow is already heavy setted. So it's really important just to like know different faces. Typically Asian girls will have heavier set eyebrows. They just kind of like lay flat. It's gonna be harder to give them a lift. Um, and then for her, she has nice big fluffy eyebrows. They do have a nice arch in them already. Watch, lift your eyebrows up high for me. I know that if I give her a little quarter of a unit right there, we're gonna be okay and nothing's gonna fall down. So go ahead and lift up for me again. Finger right there, little drop. And that's typically about how conservative I am with placing my Botox into the frontalis muscle. With units, I usually do anywhere from 20 to 35, 40 units into the glabella complex. Up here, I really only do about eight to 12 units. I would never go over that unless if it's a male frontalis. And then here we have the crow's feet, which is the obicularis oculi. This is also gonna lift the brows up because it's a depressor muscle. So I usually have them give me a big cheesy smile and then I mark right where I wanna go. You don't wanna go too far out here because if you hit this zygomaticus, you're gonna make them look like they had a stroke. You're gonna kind of mess up their smile. So it's really important that you stay within the zone that you're supposed to stay in. You wanna give them a little half a unit in there and stay very superficial. That's gonna help with some of those wrinkles. But if you go too deep in that muscle, you're actually gonna cause them to have swelling under their eye because their lymphatic system isn't gonna be able to drain any fluid out of their eye because the muscle's not gonna be working. So this is a very, that's a no zone right there. Unless if you know what you're doing and you go very superficial with like a little quarter of a unit. So then turn this way. So she has a lot of crow's feet. So um, typically the amount that I do there is gonna be anywhere from six to 14 units. And we'll give her a max dose there. So there's other areas on the face that you can treat Botox with. Today we're only gonna stay in these three areas, but I wanna show you some little tricks where you could do some other Botox that I love. So you can put Botox into these little muscles right here. You don't wanna freeze them, but it's nice to soften them sometimes. So with just a couple of units right there on each side, you can actually soften those little bunny lines. Also for a lip flip, and when women start to get these vertical perioral rhytides above their lip, you can put about four to six units of Botox up there and that's gonna not only soften those little, I call them smoker's lines, it's gonna soften the smoker's lines and it's also going to flip the lips to give her a tiny bit more volume in that upper lip and the girls love that, especially if they're a little bit nervous about doing lip filler and they just wanna try something very subtle to ease their way into other things. They can do a little lip flip, which will help, like I said, add a little bit of volume and help soften those lines. Do I need that? <laughs> there's another, there's two other areas I just wanna talk about Botox where it can be really beneficial for women. In the chin right here. So go ahead and make this face. And look, I call it chinulite. So she's got all these little dimples in her chin. But if you just put a couple units right into that mentalis, it's actually gonna soften that muscle up as well. And then I also wanna talk about the DAO. So go ahead and make that face again for me. See where these pull right here? Those are called your DAO muscles. With just a unit in each one of those DAOs, it's gonna help turn this little frown back upside down so she doesn't look so angry. And then one last thing I wanna talk about. Go ahead and bite down really hard for me. Okay, so this is called the masseter muscle. This is a big muscle, and it's one of the main reasons why people get lockjaw, TMJ, right? They might be using a mouth guard, and they could be in a lot of pain. If you take 20 to 40 units of Botox and place it into the masseter muscle, you can actually relieve that stress for them. The Botox is going to cause atrophy in the muscle. It's gonna shrink that muscle and it's gonna make them feel a lot better. And actually, some of my patients will tell me that they're actually off the night guard because I put Botox in there and they get so much relief from that. You wanna be very careful when you're putting Botox into the masseter muscle. If you go too far anterior, you could hit the rhizorus muscle, which is gonna mess up their smile. If you go too far above, you could hit the zygomaticus, which is also gonna mess up their smile as well. So it's very important that when we do Botox in this muscle right here, that we mark them in a particular way so that you cannot mess up. So normally when I do it, I'll mark from the tragus to the oral commissure, bite down for me. 
I'll feel where that anterior portion of the masseter is and I'll mark it. So I know that this right here is my sweet spot and I know that they we're not gonna have any issues. So we're gonna drop some Dysport for her. We're gonna do 120 units of Dysport, which is gonna be equivalent to 40 units of Botox. Botox is normally 10 to $16 a unit, whereas Dysport is only three to $4 a unit. Okay, so we're gonna start injecting, okay? So we're gonna start with the Glabella Complex. This is a deep injection. You just go right on in. So be mad at me and then relax. Be mad at me again. Good, relax. Angry? Good, relax. This is a very superficial injection right here. And be mad again. Good, relax. And I mean very superficial. And the reason why is because you have this little notch right here mm -hmm. and you don't want any Botox to migrate in there. Let's do a couple more in there. We're gonna move on to the frontalis. How is the pain with everything? No pain, okay, great. dab to get the blood off and to just make sure it spreads just a little bit so we could get her frozen everywhere. Perfect. So now we're gonna do these last few little units in her lip just to help soften those little vertical lines and give her a little bit of a lip flip. Perfect, now just relax. Now I just like to clean them up and just make sure they leave here with a clean face. I call these horns. They'll go away in like 30 minutes to an hour. They're just the little bumps. I call them the little horns or the little Botox bumps. Okay, so now let's talk about post-care. So I always tell my patients that they need to stay upright for four to six hours. And the reason why is because we don't want the Botox to migrate into their eyelid, which will cause a droopy eye. It's also important that they don't do any exercise for 24 hours and that we just keep it cool. We don't touch our face. We don't wanna go home and take a shower right away. And the Botox is gonna take two full weeks to fully kick in. Like I said, with Dysport, you are gonna notice that it kinda of starts to kick in a little bit faster, which is why I love it so much and it's my go-to. You're gonna notice in about two or three days, I'd say about two days, it's gonna kinda of start to kick in. Always two full weeks is at two full weeks for activation. And then in two weeks, if they need a touch up, they can always come back for a touch up. I also tell people that it's important if they want to move their facial muscles, they can frown, elevate, smile, because what happens is it is the Botox inhibits that acetylcholine receptor even faster, which causes muscle relaxation. And so that was it. We're all finished up. And this treatment was just about 15 minutes. It was great. Yeah, it's pretty painless. The lips pinched a little bit, but other than that, super easy, super fast. I love it.
So if you're getting Botox and fillers and investing all your money into those procedures, it's very important that you have a good skincare regimen with that just because you want to make sure you're maximizing the results for the Botox and fillers. I love double cleansing. I think it's very important that we double cleanse our face to get all the makeup and all the gunk off our face that we've accumulated through the day. Right after I cleanse my face, I like to use by Lemieux. It's called an iso cell toner. I like to spritz that on my face and just kind of let it absorb for a little bit. Right after that, I immediately either put on my vitamin C or my hyaluronic acid. I love hyaluronic acid. I love my Lemieux hyaluronic acid. It's so hydrating and it just sucks into my skin and keeps me so glowy and dewy throughout the whole day. Right after I use my hyaluronic acid, I put on my sunscreen. And that's typically all I do for my day routine. I like to kind of keep it simple. When I get home at night, it's all about moisturizing. It's winter right now, it's so dry out. It's really nice that people put a bunch of moisture into their skin. So at night, what I like to do is I like to double cleanse again. And then after I double cleanse, I still use my toner. And then after I use my toner, I'll probably put on some hyaluronic acid and then my retinol for night to absorb all that retinol into my skin to help with my fine lines and to help with the texture on my skin. And then I like to put on a deep moisturizer that's really gonna just infuse my skin with lots of moisturizer and goodness. I absolutely love Lemieux products. They're medical grade. This is the 24 hour age cream. If you soak in this at nighttime, your skin is going to feel like as smooth as a little baby's butt in the morning. It's amazing. And like I said, if you're doing Botox and fillers, it's very important that you have an awesome skincare regimen with that, just because you wanna make sure you're maximizing the results for the Botox and fillers. So this right here is retinol, it's 1%. I absolutely love it. This right here is gonna be the best thing that you can use on your face besides doing Botox and fillers. And the reason why is because it goes hand in hand with it. This is gonna help with wrinkles, it's gonna help with sun damage, it can also help with acne. This is derived from, from vitamin A, and I absolutely love it. Now this is a really strong grade, and it's also a prescription, so we do have to get it prescribed to the doctor. I usually have my patients start it at 0.25%, and I'll usually have them work their way up. We use it at night. It's very important that the next day that you put sunscreen on your face to protect yourself from the sun as well. But like I said, I absolutely love this. It's gonna help shed all the dead skin cells off the face. It's gonna help tighten. It's gonna help stimulate collagen. And it really helps with texture. It's very important to understand that you could peel with this. So that's typically why I have my patients start on a lower dose. And I'll usually have them start with like one to two days a week just to kind of like build it up in their system. And then from there, we can go to two to three days a week. And then from there, we can go to three to four days a week and we can go from 0.25% to 0.50% and then we can go all the way up to 1%. This is really strong medical grade retinol and it will have you peeling if you've never used any retinol before. So it's very important to be safe with our patients, start slow and just work our way up. So if you're doing Botox and fillers and if you're investing all that money into the Botox and the fillers, you should definitely have a good skincare regimen and retinol should really be a part of that regimen. And if you're interested in Botox, fillers, a good skincare routine and much, much more, please come to Bella Glow Med Spa. We're located here in San Diego, California, right in Carlsbad. And we would love to have you and give you a complimentary consultation.